Lists are something we often make use of in the real world and on the applications in our phones and computers, right? We've got to-do lists, we've got shopping lists, we've got lists of people we're following on social media, contact lists, email lists, things like that, where we don't necessarily have a fixed number of items that we want on a list, right? Your to-do list grows every time you add something you need to get done to it and shrinks when you complete something. And so the idea of a list is that we have some sequence of values that can change over time. And that concept is going to be modeled in a programming language such as Python using a built-in concept called a list, which is also a data structure and different from the types of values we've worked with so far in this course. Previously, we've seen that we can have variables that are bound to singular integer values or variables that are bound to strings, but we can't say that, okay, this variable is now associated with three values or four values or five values. With lists, we're gonna have that capability. We're gonna talk specifically or, or generically about the concept of lists in the sense that we're gonna think of them as sequences that we can change as our program is running. So let's imagine an example of why we might wanna use this before we go try and model this in code and talk about some of the specifics of lists in Python. So let's imagine we're trying to write a game and the game is gonna have a die and the player can roll that die until they roll a one. And we're gonna keep track of the rolls, okay? So um, I'm going to just say that, okay, uh, we're gonna have a uh, rolls, uh, which is what I'm gonna keep track of. And I'm gonna do this in sort of how I would do it on paper if I were playing this game on a tabletop uh, in, with a physical die. And I might say this is just a, a, a list that keeps track of, um, of of the, the number rolled. And okay, so let's imagine that the first number that I roll when, when playing this game is a two, right? And so great, it's not a one, so I can keep rolling. And the next number I roll is a six. And the next number I roll is a four. And then let's say that one is finally the last number that was rolled. So one is what ends my turn as this player. And now I can look back and I've kept track of, on my piece of paper here, the values of the, uh, the die that were rolled. So two, six, four, and one. And if we were making a game of this, we could imagine, well, how would we sum this up? Well, we could, you know, if we wanted to be very pedantic about this, I, we, you know, total uh, would be some variable that we could, or, or some value that we could keep track of. And it would have, you know, two initially, two plus six is eight. Uh, eight plus four is 12. And then let's say we count the one. So 12 plus one is 13 would have been the total score of that round of me playing. All right, so now that we have this fundamental concept of a game that we might want to be able to model in a program and notice that we're keeping track of all of the rolls and we don't necessarily know how many times we'll roll a number until we hit the number one. So we can't use variables like we've used in the past um, and, and make this program work without it becoming very overwhelming. And at some point we're gonna run out of, you know, maybe we think that you're never gonna roll more than a uh, hundred turns in this. And so we can set up a hundred variables, but at some point, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna reach the limit. Uh, and, and, and we don't want there to be any limits on the number of values we can store. So that's why we're going to try using a list and introduce the concept that way. So I'd encourage you to join me in VS Code and let's set up a new, um, example here, which will be list uh, game.py. We're not really gonna make a full game, we're just gonna make like one turn of this game such that we can demonstrate this concept at a very high level and look at some of the syntax and concepts of lists behind the scenes, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and just set up a doc string here. And this doc string is going to say um, examples of using lists in a simple game. And I'm even gonna put the word game in, in quotes just to make it clear that this is really not a, a game that you would wanna play, but one that we're using just for demo purposes. Okay, so what do we need to do to keep, or what do we need to keep track of and what will we need in order to implement this game? Well, the first thing we're gonna need is the ability to roll a random number between one and six. This is a concept we've looked at in the past, so I'm not gonna spend much time explaining it here, but we're going to import from the random library uh, the randint function. Right? That will allow us to generate a random integer. 
Um, this is a function defined in the random library. And very soon we'll look at um, what it means to have packages such as the random package that's in our standard library uh, and how it is that we can import functions from other places that, that we don't have to redefine them ourselves. That's a little bit beyond our scope here. Okay, so next we want to have a variable that can keep track of our roles. So uh, what we're going to try doing is setting up a variable and I'm going to name it roles. And what's its type going to be? Is it just going to be an integer, right? Uh, or maybe it's like English where we add an S to the end of it. And this is a way that we can say that we've got a plural type. It doesn't work that way. So what we're going to say is we, we want, what we want to say, right, is a list of numbers rolled. Or if I were trying to be a little bit more pedantic here in, uh, in, in, in the terms that we have in our language, uh, we would want this to be a list of ints right, a list of int values, because our die rolls are always going to be integers. So how can we express the type list of integer? So we can say list of integer, all right? These square brackets are indicating that we have a list of some type, and we're separating those out by putting that what that some type is in the uh, square brackets, right? So this is a list of integers. And I think it's actually worth pausing here and keeping track of on a separate slide, um, some of the notes about what it is that we have syntactically going on or in the syntax of our programming language uh, with lists. So the first thing that we need to know about lists is how do we type them? And the way that we're going to type our lists is uh, I'm gonna use white here to say this is sort of the unimportant part. So roles is typed as, and then here's where things, this gets important a list and then the square brackets and I'm just going to keep those empty for now and then uh, I'll use the specific example we're using in today's program which is a list of integer values okay and you can read this as a list of ints right so we're going to in the roles variable it's referring to a value that's going to hold a list of integers right and more generically, we would say that this is a list and then T is the type, right, of type T. So when you have this capital T here, what we're, what we're indicating is we could have also a list of strings, a list of booleans, a list of floats, right? And so we can have lists of any other type, um, but for our purposes, we're going to be focused on lists that have um, a singular data type stored in each of their items or elements, okay? And I'll come back to those, that's important terminology to return back to items and elements. Uh, and as soon as we start having them added to our list, I'll come back to that. Okay, well, how do we actually um, get an empty list in memory? Previously, you know, if we wanted to have, um, like say the number zero, we could say is assigned zero for a singular integer. Well, what about a list? There are a couple of different ways of initializing a list value, but I wanna show you the simplest that sets up an empty list, right? So we can assign to this the empty list, right? You'll notice this looks like a function call, and it is, it's a special kind of function call. This is a constructor call where we're constructing a new empty list. Uh, and just like you've seen, and I'm gonna write this in a comment just for example purposes, um, we've seen things like stir of say 10, where we're constructing a string from the number 10, you know, this function call is setting up an empty list, right? And so now we have a list that has nothing in it. And if we wanted to try printing this list and, and convincing ourselves that was the case, okay, print roles, uh, and we can see what this will look like in, mem uh, in, in our program, okay? And I've just got an extra new line up here where that error is coming from, all right. Oh, it's complaining that, uh, so you might get some syntax here that says if you were to hover over this, just like I have with our pilot uh, or uh, with our linting software installed, it's telling us we didn't actually use this function we imported and we will, right? So we'll get there. Uh, and so I'm gonna go ahead and run this program, Python run as a module. And then this is in the lessons directory and list game is the name of the module. You see these empty square brackets. Well, that's kind of strange. What are, what's going on with these empty square brackets? Well, 
I'll come back to that, but that's what we call list literal syntax, and we'll see it in just a moment if we wanted to uh, initialize a list with some, some values in it previously, or, or to begin with. So let's try appending an item to our list of roles. I've told you that a list is something that can change, right? We can add things to it, we can remove things from it. So before we worry about this randomization, let's just go ahead and try uh, adding an item to this list and just say roles dot append and then the number one, right? What we're seeing here is something that you've read a little bit about in the past and that is what we call a method call, right? And so we'll talk a lot about methods and how they differ from just plain old functions later. But the key difference is notice that we have roles, which is our list, so our list of roles. And then this dot is saying, uh, I want to um, call a function called a method specifically on roles. So hey, roles, I want you to call your append function and use the number one as an argument to it. In other words, hey, roles append the number one to the list that you have. And, and let's add one more. So roles dot append two. Actually, let me make this a number that's that's larger, like say three. So we're skipping around a little bit. Now, if I run this program again, notice what happened. We have a different value that's being printed out. We have a list with the elements one followed by the element three in it. And the sequence of values matters. A list is an ordered sequence. So if we append one and then we append three, stored in that list, one will come before three unless we do something to reorder them intentionally. But by default, as you append items to the list, they get added to the end of it. That's what the word append is implying. Okay, so uh, we can, uh, let's add some more notes here. So we can construct And the constructor is just the, uh, and let me actually keep consistent here and use green for this. So the constructor is just the function list and this is built in to the language. Uh, and this constructs, uh, creates an empty list in memory. Okay. We'll see later that there are ways that we can provide other arguments to lists. Like when we learn about something called a range, we could say, hey, make a list out of this range and it will construct a list that has some values in it. But by default, when we use this constructor and we don't give any arguments to it, we're gonna get an empty list, which is a great starting point when we're just trying to uh, work through keeping track of something from scratch, right? And in, th in this game that we're making, we wanna start from scratch. Uh, we can also add items to a list. And I'm just, I'm going to use, um, yeah, let's use the simpler way of thinking about this, add item. Uh, and so that's going to be, uh, so uh, let's say roles. Uh, and then I'll use green to highlight what's important here, dot append. And then some value. And I'm actually going to use, I'm going to write this as expert of type T. All right, so I'm going to be a little bit more formal here. And when I say expert of type T, what do I mean? Well, remember when we said we have a list of integers, well, if we want to append a value to that list, it better be an integer. Um, but when we go to append, we can use any expression we want. So we could use arithmetic as the argument. We could have a variable that goes here. Um, we can append anything as long as it evaluates down to a single integer when our program runs, uh, and that's how we can append it. But this T is generic, right? So if I had a list of strings, as long as the argument here evaluated to a string, I would be fine. So this uh, adds items, adds an item to the end of a list. And let me just separate these out. Okay. And great. So we know how to type a variable as a list. We know how to construct a new empty list. And now we know how to append to a list. Let's keep going. Well, one of the things that we can do, as I just mentioned, because this append 
is going to be an expression, um, we can say, okay, well, let's generate a random integer here. Instead of appending the number one hard-coded, let's use an expression, which a function call is an expression. So rand int between the numbers one and six, right? And so the second role will do the same thing, rand int between the numbers one and six. So I save my program and I go to run it again. And notice that we get six, one, six, six, five, two. And now we can kind of see, okay, we're making some progress. We are moving in the direction of uh, being able to generate random lists of, of dice rolls. And now what will we do? Well, we're gonna need to continue looping while we are continuing to roll the die. Remember, we're trying to set up a little program that simulates rolling a singular die until we roll a one and then call the, the, the game done at that point and, and report back on a score of what was the total of the dice values that, that we rolled. Um, so, okay, uh, we probably need a loop. And how do we wanna structure that loop? Well, we need something that will, will ultimately become, uh, we need that loop to ultimately terminate. So we, we wanna be careful about that. And we know that one of the terminating conditions uh, or the terminating conditions is that the last item that was rolled um, was equal to one. Okay, so we should probably figure out well, what is the last item that was rolled? And how do we access the individual rolls of our, our, our uh, list? So the next thing we need to learn a little bit about before we try and bring this program a little bit closer to, to completion is how do we access individual items? So let's make some notes on this. Access an individual item, all right? So just like with how you've seen strings used subscription notation, we can use subscription notation with lists as well. So I can say roles and then look in subscript zero or index zero. And we'll see that, uh, let me run this again with a little bit more space here. So we printed out the values and notice that the list had two values in it and the value at index zero or the item at index zero was three. Uh, and if I were to print roles of index one, we know that we can do that because we previously appended two items. So the first item's index is zero. Lists are zero indexed in Python. And the second item's index was one. So let me just make this a little bit bigger again. And so we see, okay, the random integers that were rolled were five followed by two. And then if we wanted to access later in our program, um, what was uh, the item stored at index zero? We can do so using subscription notation. Okay, so let's maybe make a note of that. So access items of a list. Okay, so we're, our list name is roles, and then we use subscription notation and this needs to be an x an int expression, right? So our uh, our indices when we're accessing an individual item have to be an integer starting from zero, and let's make a note of that, right? So uh, using subscription notation, or the subscription operator. Uh, to um, access, and I'm going to write specifically zero based indices to access items by their zero based indices. All right. So using subscription notation to access items by their zero based indices is what we're doing here, right? We are uh, effectively doing what we did with a string and where a string, we were able to um, access the individual characters of a string with a list. We have a sequence of items and the subscription notation allows you to access whatever item you want. It's a superpower that we have an integer expression right here. Right? Because that means we can be creative and clever about the arithmetic. Uh, 
how, that means we can write a uh, an expression that accesses the very last item that was stored in our list uh, with some creativity. And in order to do so, we just need a little bit of arithmetic. We need to know what was the length of our list. Uh, and then we subtract one because it's going to be zero indexed. And that will give us an expression that allows us to access the last item of our list. Well, how do we get the length of a list? Uh, well, the good news is Python tries to be cons consistent here. Um, access the length of a list, number of items with the length key, uh, function. So len, so let's print this out. So print len and then rolls. Okay. So this in Python, when we're ask asking for the number of items in some collection, and so in a string, we have a collection of characters. In a list, we have a collection here of integers. Uh, let's try running this. And notice that, uh, let me run this one more time. So the two numbers that were rolled randomly were three followed by six. So three and six were when we access those items individually. And then the length of this was two, all right? So when we know that we have uh, the length of a list, we know how many items it has. So if we had appended a third item, this would have been three. Uh, and actually, let's try that. So let's try adding one more to it. So rolls dot append, and then one more rand int one six. Right? We're about to write the loop that makes us uh, actually do what we wanted to. But I just added one more line where we're appending one more value at random. And now we're going to print this length. Right. So notice that the length increased to three because we have three items added to our list. Great. Well, we can use uh, arithmetic, access the last item of a list. Print rolls at index or subscription notation. How can we actually compute the last index? Well, we can take the length of our list, so length of rolls, and minus subtract one from it, right? And you're thinking, well, why do that? Well, remember, if our list length is three, that means the first item in our list has an index of zero, the second item has an index of one, and the third item has an index of two. So because we start counting from zero, the last item in our list is always gonna have an index that is one less than the length, right? Because zero is the first index, but that doesn't really, like if, but we are, and so our length is always gonna be one more than the highest index is, an, is the opposite way of thinking about this, okay? Uh, and if this feels a little bit cumbersome, we could have also set up a last index variable here, which is an integer, and that would have been the length of rolls minus one. And in this uh, subscription notation, we could have used the last index here. Right. Now I want to make a point to say that in the Python programming language specifically, there are some other tricks and syntactical measures that we can take that's shorthand, uh, that's very specific to the Python language. But broadly for right now, we're not going to we're going to ignore any of those shortcuts and focus on how we would do this generically in any programming language, which the trick is when you're working with a sequence of values that are zero index, you can always compute the last index by taking the length of that sequence and subtracting one from it. Right? So this is a pattern that applies very broadly. Awesome. So uh, let's just make one more note of uh, accessing the size of a list. So get the number of items in a list. And oops, let me just keep this white. All right. And so size of list, size or uh, number of items in list. All right, and so that's going to be the len, len or length function and then we put our list as give our list as an argument and that will give us back the number of items that are stored in our list right and that's commonly useful because if we wanted to write a loop that processed all of the items in our list we would need to make use of this additionally if we wanted to compute what is the last index of our list we would need this len keyword okay so now we have um, all of the individual pieces that we need um, in order to create this game. So how can we actually rewrite our logic to make use of this? Well, let's set up a while loop. And I'm actually gonna just kind of push, and, and for now what I'm gonna do is actually comment out all of this code that we had below, okay? 
So this is actually a really nice shortcut to be uh, to make use of and know in Visual Studio Code and in many other programming languages. If you select a number of lines of code, so I'm going to select all these lines and I just drag, use clicked and dragged my mouse over them. So now all these lines are selected. I'm going to press the Control button and the forward slash button, right? And so uh, Control forward slash and notice that that added. Uh, and that's on Windows. Uh, I believe it's Command forward slash on Mac. Uh, and notice that that added comments, uh, the hash symbol to the start of every line that was selected. If you press it again, it will remove them. All right, so it's a very easy way to toggle between having comments and not. Uh, and it's the Control or Command forward slash on your on your keyboard. Okay, so now let's set up a uh, a while loop here. So we need a complex condition here. We want to roll while the last roll is not equal to one. Okay, so how do we specify that? Um, we could say something like rolls, and we just looked at the uh, length of rolls minus one and is not equal to zero, or sorry, not equal to one, right? So that's saying while the last roll's value was not one, we're going to loop, right? And we're going to see that we actually have an error here that we need to be careful of. I want to just point out this, there's more that we need to do here. Um, but let's go ahead and, and, and pretend we, we don't realize there's going to be an error yet. We'll come back to resolve that in just a moment. Um, but what do we want to do? So until you've rolled a one, we want to append another roll to our uh, rolls list, right? So rolls.append rand int one six. Okay. Now this is a while loop that's not keeping track of a counter. We're not saying, okay, you get up to 10 rolls or something like that, or you're going to roll five times specifically. Now we're saying we're going to keep rolling until at some point we roll a one as our last roll. Okay. So let's see what happens when uh, we try running this program. Right. So I run my program. Uh oh, we get an index error. It says the list index is out of range. Well, what could that mean? Well, let's think about what's actually going on here, right? So after this very first line on line six, we know that rules has been bound to an empty list, a list with nothing in it, right? And then on this line, we're saying, okay, well, what, what would this expression evaluate to? And you know what, why don't I go ahead and pull up uh, a pen real quick so that I can write on my screen uh, to just make this a little bit more evident. So after we construct the list, we're going to say that, okay, rolls, I'm just going to use, uh, I'm just going to wave my hands a little bit. Rolls is associated with a list of int and it's empty, right? There's no items in this list yet, okay? So then when we come down and we try and, and the processor tries to evaluate this line, what's going on? Well, length of rolls is going to be what? Well, there's, not, there's no items in it, so this is gonna be zero. And zero minus one is going to give us negative one, right? And so rolls of negative one uh, means we're accessing a number that's less than zero uh, and there's no index that's less than zero because we have an empty list here uh, and negative indices uh, don't work in that way. So we've got an issue. We're trying to access an element that doesn't exist. The same thing would be true even if we had accessed rolls of index zero, right? Because this is empty, there is no item at index zero for us to look up. So one of the things you have to be careful with when using lists and subscription notation is if you get an index error, that means you're attempting to access uh, an index that doesn't yet exist. Okay, well, how can we improve the logic of this such that um, we don't ask, we, we don't evaluate this uh, expression if we know that what is true? Well, if we, we know that if the length of the list is, uh, is equal to zero, then we want to roll for the very first time. We don't. We want to ignore this other condition. So why don't we go ahead and set up an and expression here? So while uh, length of rolls uh, is 
equal to, or we could do an or actually, what well, uh, length of rolls is equal to zero, or the last roll is not equal to one, then we're going to go into the list or go into the while loop. Okay, so let's break this down. So what we're saying here is while length of rolls is equal to zero. All right, so the very first time we encounter this while loop, right, we haven't appended any new rolls to our list. So this length is going to be zero. That's okay. That means, uh, and because that's true and we're using an or statement, it doesn't even matter what comes after it. Python's not even gonna look at it. We know that true or anything else that happens is going to be true. So we're gonna go into the while loop and we're gonna append our first value, all right? After that first value is appended and we go back up to the top of the loop, we would test while the length of rolls is equal to zero. Well, that's gonna be false because now it's one, right? Or, so then we will need to test this. The last roll uh, was not equal to one. So let's imagine this logic really quickly. Okay, so uh, let's imagine, so length of rolls is zero, zero equal to zero is true. And because this is an or, we know that this whole statement is going to evaluate true and Python isn't even gonna try to execute this uh, right hand side. It's just gonna say, okay, we know this is true. Let's keep going. Let's not waste our efforts evaluating something that isn't gonna have an effect on the logic of the program. So we go into the loop and we append, let's say we rolled a two. And so rolls.append is going to ultimately say, okay, at index zero, we rolled a two. All right, and so I'm gonna keep track of, uh, and actually let me make notes of these. So index, and I'm gonna put just V for value. So uh, here I'm gonna have an index of zero and a value of two, All right? And the next thing that happens is we finish that body. So we go back up to the top and we say, well, length of, rolls is equal to zero. Well, now length of rolls is one, right? We just appended our first item. And so that then we need to test or, so that was false, or the last item that we rolled, which is two. So, and we can think about this. So length of rolls is one, one minus one is zero, right? So rolls at index zero, we look up in our table, what is index zero? That's bound to two. So two is not equal to one. And that's true, right? We haven't rolled one yet. So, okay, we're gonna go back into our loop and we're gonna append again. And let's say that we append this time at index one, we rolled a one, all right? And so we rolled a one. We go back up to the top of our loop while the length of rolls now is two equal to zero, that's false. Or rolls at, let's say, let's evaluate this expression. So length of rolls is now two, right? We've rolled the die two times. Two minus one is going to be one. So we're saying what, what is rolls at index one, well, we look up in our table and index one has a value of one stored in it. So one does not equal one. That's gonna be false, right? One does equal one. So because we had false or false, we're gonna be done with this loop and we would continue on in our program. So before we go and run this, let's actually try printing out our roles at the very end. So we can print our roles here. Great. And I'm gonna clear this out and run this one more time. Wow, look at that. So we we ran this game and noticed that in this simulation, in this run of it, we had four, three, six, four, two, six, six, and then one was the final number rolled, right? We can play this again and notice that the second time I played the game, there are even more numbers. The third time there were fewer. And notice some very key ideas being demonstrated here. We've got a short little program that we is generating some random numbers representing die, right? We're choosing a random number between one and six. And we don't know when we wrote this program, how many items are gonna be in this in the list that gets generated. We are randomly continuing to do so until we roll a one. And, and that could go on for you know one time, that could go on a hundred times. Uh, if we're in you know, Rosencrantz and Guildenstern, it could go on infinitely, uh, but eventually, right, we're gonna roll a one. And there's, for each additional roll, we've got a one out of six chance of, of rolling a one, all right? But there's one where we rolled a, a large number of times before we hit that one. Okay, so we're demonstrating that lists are dynamic, meaning they can grow and or shrink. We haven't seen how you would remove an item from a list. Um, but maybe that's what we'll do at the very end. What if we said we don't want to count the one that comes at the end of our rolls? Of our rolls, we just want to uh, uh, remove that item. So how can we do that? 
well, let's let's make one more note of that, and then we'll look at how can we sum up the score of the player that, that played this game, right? And add up all of these these rolled values. So let's add a um, remove an item from the list by its index. Pop. Okay. The reason why we call this functionality popping. Um, is a little bit more nuanced than we want to um, put our uh, uh, spend time with. But the short story is, if we think about a list as something we can push values onto, like we're appending on to one side of it, we might also want to pop them off that same side. And this is what we call a stack, which is different than a list. But that's that's you know beyond our concerns. But that's sort of, there is a reason why this is called pop. Uh, it's not just a random term that was chosen. Uh, that's a historical reason. Um, but what we're going to do is say, okay, let's roles.pop. And we're going to have to give an index here. Um, if we didn't give an index, it would uh, pop the last item of the list. But let's let's always try and give an index with popping and say length of roles minus one. We know that that is going to pop the last index off of the list. So if we were to print our list of roles again, what we hope to see is that we've removed the one that was at the end of our list, right? Because it was the very last item. So <laughs> that was a, a game where we rolled one on the very first try. And so we ended up with an empty list, which is an interesting edge case to be concerned with. Um, but notice here, we played again. And after we rolled our die, you know, some number of times, we ended with uh, uh, only scores that were greater than one. Uh, and so notice we can use the pop method of a list to remove an item by its index, right? Typically, we're going to carry out a pattern where we append to the end of the list and we very rarely actually remove from it, but sometimes it's useful to remove from the middle of a list. In which case, if you do, all the indices will shift down. Your list is guaranteed to have indices zero through the length of the list minus one, and they're always gonna be continuous, zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. Um, there won't be any gaps. So if we popped, you know, in this example, if we had popped this item, everything that came after it would shift to one index lower, such that, you know, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about the idea or keep track of the idea, oh, we removed something, we should be careful about our indices. No, no, uh, the indices will also always be in increasing integer order, starting from zero up to length minus one of the list. Okay, so now we've seen how to construct a new list. We've seen how to you know, generate some data and dynamically append to a list. We've seen that we can print out uh, the representation of a list, how to remove something from a list. Let's write a little algorithm to process each item of a list and uh, work through each item one by one. So we're gonna use um, a convention here that's very common in programming when we're writing a little algorithm to process each item of a list one by one. So let's uh, sum the values of uh, our roles. Okay. We're gonna use a while loop here. Later we'll learn about another kind of loop that can make this even simpler, but because we know while loops, let's stay true to our, our bread and butter here. And this is also something that will translate to many other programming languages as well. So understanding this pattern of working with a loop is very important. So let's say we have a variable named i, that's short for index, and that's an integer variable, and we know that we're always starting from an index of zero, right? Well, if we're trying to sum up, like tally up what are the values that we've seen so far, uh, maybe I'll set up a variable named sum that will also be an integer and our sum is going to start from zero. Right? Our goal, and let's imagine I'm gonna bring my pen back out. And let's see, can I undo that? Great. So let's imagine with this example that we had seen before, right? So here's our uh, list of roles. And then I'm gonna have an index i of zero and a sum of zero as well, is what we're setting up here. And what we're saying is, okay, um, let's write a loop that starts from index zero, looks up the value stored at index zero, so that's two, and increases the sum based on that. So okay, after seeing index zero of two, we sum is two, and we go back to the top, and we're gonna increase i, so we're gonna need to write the loop that does this. And we look at, at the next index, and 
you know, we've just removed one from our list. So it's as if our list looks like, like this, right? So we would have actually been done with this, but let's imagine we had more items and, and this was three. Uh, we would say, okay, the index one contains the value three. So let's increase our sum to be, you know, five now. So two plus three is five. And basically what we're trying to do is use our index I to move one by one through each of the values in our list and look up, okay, what is the value at index zero? What is the value at index one? And increase our sum each time we do that. So let's, let's turn that concept into code. So while I is less than, well, when do we stop? What is our terminating condition here? Well, this is gonna be length of the list, right? We don't wanna say, well, I is less than 10 because we may not have rolled the die 10 times. We want this to be based on how many items are left in our list. And notice we didn't have to keep track of anything about removing because we removed an item, the length of the list decreased by one and we're totally fine here. So I starts from zero and this loop will continue to run while I is less than the length. And remember less than here makes sense because we started from zero and the maximum index is gonna be one less than the total length of our rows. And what we'll do is we'll say sum is assigned the current sum and we're going to add onto that roles of index I, right? So look up the index I, which will initially be zero, and then it'll be one, and then it'll be two. So we're effectively starting from the top of our list and saying, okay, what's that value? What's that value? What's that value? Each time we see a new value, we're gonna add it to our sum. And then we're going to increase our counter variable such that uh, we move on to the next index before we go back up to the top of the loop and continue again. And because we're increasing our variable I, we know that we're making progress towards this condition becoming false. And when this loop finishes, we can say something like print uh, the F string or the format string of total score. And then sum is the variable we want to print out the uh, total of. Okay, so here we've got an example of a little algorithm that's gonna move through each of the items of our list one by one. And let's try uh, actually running this program, okay? I'm gonna give myself a little bit more space so that I make sure all the output of this program is in my terminal here. Okay, so this game, we rolled a six and then a one. This is an easy test case to, to look at how things went. We see that after we removed the very last item, that one that we kind of wanted to ignore, the uh, only roll that we have is six and we see that our total score is six. Let's try again. Uh oh, well, here's another interesting edge case. We rolled a one immediately that left us with an empty list and our total score is zero. So that actually works. That's good to convince ourselves that we, we know that that works. Ah, and here's a more interesting one. We rolled many more numbers and we summed them up and we see that the total score is 42, which is a lucky number. The answer to life, the universe and everything. Uh, let's try getting one that's a little bit less work for us to figure out. There we go. All right, so here's one where we rolled five times until we rolled a one and we have four values left over. So let's see, we have six plus four, that's 10, plus five is 15, plus five is 20. And so we can see that our total score, that sum, summation that we did here, uh, worked out just fine. Okay, so now we've seen how we can write an algorithm that given some list of values, we don't know how long it's gonna be because we don't even know what that list contained at the start of our game uh, or, or previously. That was figured out when our program was run and it's using randomization. Uh, but we were able to write an algorithm that is really fascinating because notice we have a fixed length number of lines. We have one, two, three, four, five lines of code. And these five lines of code will add up all of the items in our list, no matter how long it is, right? If we had 100,000 items in this list, these five lines of code, five, uh, would bring you all the way to having a sum for the total of that list. Great. So just to recap where what we've seen so far, um, we've seen the ability to add types to our program saying, hey, this variable is gonna be bound to a list of values. We can construct an empty list. Uh, we can add items to a list. We can access items in the list. We know how to access the number of items in a list. There's one other piece of syntax I wanna be sure to show you before we uh, bring home um, just some, some, some final notes. Uh, and that is what we call list literal syntax. And for this, I'm actually going to um, start up a REPL and show you this interactively in the REPL. So 
I started up with Python REPL and notice I'm in Python 3.9. And now let's say roles is a list of integers. And what we saw in the past was, or what we saw previously, we assigned it uh, an empty list with the constructor, right? And so now if we said print roles, we've got the empty list, all right? Well, what if we wanted to initialize a list that had some values in it? Um, like say we wanted to initialize a list that had the values one, two, three in it. We can use what's called list literal syntax. So here I'm saying reassign the variable roles, which is a list of integers to the value, which is a list literal, right? Because we're saying literally make a list that has the items one, two, and three in it. Uh, and, and let me do this again with actually 10, 20, 30, because what I want to show you it's going to be a little bit more nuanced. So now our list of roles, if we were to print it out, we can see it's a list with three items in it, 10, 20, and 30. And we can also say, well, what's the uh, roles at index zero? Right? And convince ourselves that that's going to be that first item, 10, right? So the item or element is going to refer to what's stored at an index of a list. And here we're saying the item at index zero is 10, right? And similarly, we can convince ourselves item in index one is 20 and the item in index two is 30. Hopefully that follows pretty logically, right? So this is list literal syntax and it's really handy. So if I wanted to say like um, um, words is a list of string, we could initialize that list of strings to like the quick box, right? And now if I were to print my words, we can see that, okay, we've got a, a list of three strings and we could say, well, what is the words at index zero? Oops, uh, and so I forgot the S in my variable name. That's the string the that we printed out. Uh, and you kind of get the point here that we can set up lists of integers, strings, and using list literal syntax, you can go ahead and initialize them. So we're seeing square brackets in three places. And the last set of notes I want to make on this uh, slide is how do we distinguish these square brackets and, and just being very careful about these three differences, okay? So square brackets in Python are used in three places primarily, and it's important to be able to distinguish these, all right? So these have different meanings. in different contexts. All right. So the first is our data types. All right. And this is where, you know, we're going to see a, um, and I'll use pink here for list. And then I'm going to use green to highlight the square bracket. And uh, then we're going to have some type and I'll just write T here for type. Actually, we'll write this out for notes. Uh, so list of some type, right? And an example of this is, you know, list of string, right? So inside of those square brackets, we put some other type and that type is, is like it's implying we're gonna have a list of, of some strings here or a list of some type. The second place we'll see it and we saw it today was in the subscription operator. And you've already seen it here. So the subscription operator is where like we have say a list of, um, I'll use blue, uh, roles. And then I'm gonna use purple here for these brackets because they're different from the green brackets in the sense of they have some specific meaning. And then uh, we've got, say, a number like zero or some int expression, right? And so this is accessing individual items of a list, right? So access items. Okay. And the third that we've seen is um, the list literal syntax. We just looked at this, so list literal, right? And so here, uh, I'm going to use yellow for these square brackets. Uh, we've got our square brackets. And then, you know, for let's say roles, uh, 
uh, we had say we could have initialized some roles to be you know two four and six and what we're saying here is this is going to evaluate to a list of integers if we wrote this and it's going to initialize a brand new list in memory um, that is of whatever type of each item in that list okay so these are three different contexts for seeing square brackets in your programs when we use it as part of a type we're saying we can have a list of some type list of strings list of integers and inside of those square brackets we would put a type like int stir or bool when we're using the subscription operator which you've already seen with strings we're using an integer value and saying okay we can have an integer expression here so not only can we use hard integer literals like 0 1 2 and 3 you can also use arithmetic like the length of some list minus 1 to get the very last item and or a variable like i to get the items and by their index and, and write a loop like we did in the examples and then the last place that you'll see them is surrounding a, a number of values and we call this a list literal and this is constructing a new list with some default values in it there's one last note i need to make uh, that i forgot to mention which is okay let's remember where we just came from we have this example of our words um, list one of the other things that we can do is we can reassign a value in that list so let's say we wanted to change um, the first word so words at index zero can be reassigned to capital v all right so and maybe i'll make it all caps so capital the is the string right so we can reassign an element in our list and now if i were to go back and print that list again notice that i've replaced the item at that index okay so we didn't need this in the game that we wrote because we we're just keeping track of all of the items um, as we added them by rolling the die but it is possible to replace items in a list or reassign items in a list with on the left hand side of your assignment operator using the index notation and this could have been any integer expression uh, and so i could also say you know um, words at index uh, length of words minus one is assigned fox right and so now if i were to print these words again we would see that i've changed that last index here now if you were to try and assign you know words of length of words so this is going to be one past the end is assigned exclamation points we're going to see that we get an index error and why is that well hopefully you can recall the index in this case three doesn't exist we have indices zero one two so we can't reassign to three if we wanted to add an item to the end of the list how would we do that we, will, we would have to say words.append and then our value and now i could see that uh, okay we have actually successfully appended so if you want to assign to an index that is one off the end of your list or one greater than your maximum index you have to append to that list which we learned about before so this is an introduction to lists in python they're a very valuable and commonly used data structure we call it a data structure because we're organizing multiple values and lists have some important properties that we've seen they're sequential meaning we're always going to have when we the items the order that we add our items to the list will be maintained throughout our program unless we did something specifically to swap the values or sort the values in some way uh, the order that you append to a list is the order that that list will be in it's a sequence that begins with zero so it's a zero based index zero is the first index the length of the uh, the list minus one is the very last or the maximum index and we saw that there's one other important property when we compare this with some other data types in the future you can have duplicate values right when we rolled the die we saw very commonly the same number would get rolled multiple times and we can keep track of that in our list and that's okay duplicates are okay lists wind up being used in many many different contexts in programming so it's important to understand how they work and hopefully this video gives you a solid foundation to move forward from with some examples of dynamically adding from a list as well as what it looks like when we write up a, a simple little algorithm that moves through each item in a list one by one and in our case we performed a summation great work